got two relatively short but really good and informative demos. The first one is um, on Sierra, and I've got two other guys here from the Agile development team. We've got um, Jason Scott and Gareth Kendall, and they're going to actually give you a live demonstration of Sierra um, and its integration with HLEP. So I'll, I'll just shut up and let them get on with it. <laughs> Jason and Gareth. Can't leave it alone. Um, so, um, as Andy talked about earlier this morning, um, our in-house development team have a long history of creating um, great clinical software, great patient care and patient flow. Um, these are things such as our bed management system, electronic referrals, e-discharge, and TTA tracking, uh, TTA being the drugs that patients take away from the hospital. Um, because these have been in-house developed, they've always been based on bespoke databases and bespoke APIs. So it was a, a key that has been talked about this morning. These are, these are data models that we've created as software developers, albeit in conjunction with our clinician. And it meant that our software could be shared with other trusts and run as tests, but those trusts would have to adopt and conform to the same <coughs> databases and APIs as we do. face of our integrated digital care record and today we're going to be showing you CR and its integration with OpenEP which is Moran's electronic prescribing solution and demonstrating how well that works and how you can build upon this system. Over to Gareth. Hello everybody, uh, we're short for time so I'm going to jump straight into the demo. Uh, I am going to do that thing of point out we're over public Wi-Fi so <laughs> fingers crossed yeah. <laughs> We go straight into the demo. And welcome to Sierra. The first screen that you actually come into when you come into Sierra is my personal landing space. So this has all the information that I'm interested in. Not what my colleagues are interested in, but what I'm interested in. I can see my tasks. I'm not that busy today, I've only got one, which is demonstrate Sierra. <laughs> I can see on the right my basic information, my email addresses, okay. telephone numbers. I'm actually going to be quite nice to my team here, and I'm going to come online. I'm going to pick today, and I'm going to be here for a long day from 8 this morning <coughs> until 6 this evening. And I'm going to go to the acute care team. <coughs> By setting that, I've now come online, and you can see to the left, a couple of extra tasks have come in as well. So there's something there that if I wanted to, if I was feeling helpful, I could open the task manager, and I could actually say that I'm going to take ownership of one of these tasks. There we go. That task is now mine. My team will be thrilled. <laughs> if I wanted to open up patients within the system, there are a number of ways that I can do this. I can simply use the search, which finds all those patients or tasks that are actually relevant. I can use my last 10 viewed. Those are the last 10 patients that I've actually opened up. I can jump straight into those. Or I can actually bookmark my favorite patients, those that I'm really, really interested in. And I can jump straight into those at any time. If I didn't want to go into an individual patient, but what I want to actually see is a list of patients, I can do that as well. We can see to the left, I've got my last 10 viewed lists. Or I could just open from a pick list and pick any one. I'm actually going to load up Monkswell Ward, just because I know it's a very healthy ward. <laughs> this view that's coming up now is actually built from our bed management system, the in-house um, developed system. So we can see things like the bay that the patient's in, the bed spaces, their names, um, their identifiers, how long they've been in. All of these have only been in for two days. It's a miracle. <laughs> we can also see a number of our key attributes. These, as I've already been mentioned today, um, other hospitals used to have the magnets. We had exactly the same. We used the magnets. Highly dangerous. They can slip down the boards. <laughs> and these have actually been changed for us, and they're part of our bed management system. We call these attributes. We can see here, uh, we can see all the falls risks on the ward. 
We can see those that have dementia. <coughs> we can even see indicators that tell us whether the blood results have come back for that patient or whether partial blood results have come back. This speeds up. The clinicians don't have to keep logging into the system to actually see what's there. We can also see our discharge status is something our site teams use right through the hospital. So we can see those patients that are discharged, ready to be discharged today, ready to be discharged tomorrow, or those that are fit for discharge today, but are delayed for a number of reasons. Could be that the community isn't ready to accept that patient, or we're just waiting for transport. We also have outliers. So we can actually see these patients here are patients that aren't my ward's responsibility they're actually, they could be surgical patients on a medical ward, uh, but we don't want to lose track of those. We can also see by hovering over those, the wards that are actually responsible for those, so we can constantly keep in communication. Our site teams see a very different view to this. They can actually drill down and see an entire list of one or many of those attributes. So our physios can see all of the patients in the hospital that have physio. Uh, the, Discharge teams can see all those that are ready to be discharged today, but just need a boot to get them out. <laughs> in this occasion, I'm, I'm going to be a nurse today, and I actually want to look at the, the administrations of the drugs that I have to do. I can do this by going to the administrations tab at the top. This now is passing that exact same set of patients that I had in my previous list over to OpenEP. That exact same list now, I can see the tasks with an open EP of those medication items that I need to prescribe or do something with. We can see those that are red, though I've not been keeping up with the list. Uh, those that are due today at any other point. If I wanted to go in and see in more detail that um, drug chart, I can simply click on one of those patients. This is told, open EP is told, so yeah, do something. I've clicked this patient, please open up the drug chart. CA has taken that, we've gone off to our demographic screens and we've automatically <coughs> selected the drugs chart and minimised as much as we can just to give a fuller view of the actual drug chart. And we can see here this one's got quite a lot of drugs on this list. I'm going to <coughs> take a step back now. I'm, I'm finished with my administrations. I'm going to go back to the home screen and I'm actually going to open up one of my favourite patients. We're going to open up Trevor James. This is coming to the exact same screen that we've seen before, previously, but slightly differently rendered. So we have the full demographic information, we can see the GP information, the same attributes <laughs> that we're showing on the main list. We also have a number of tabs available. We've selected a different one this time, we've come into the summary. This is showing us a complete Summary of what's happened to this patient whilst they've been in. Any ward moves, consultant moves, any clinical images have been taken, any allergy updates that have been done, they would all display here. We can also see any electronic forms that have been submitted for that patient, could be MDT referrals. And we can see any tasks that are set just for that patient, it might be to take bloods or book transport. And we can see the allergy status. And for this particular patient, they have no allergies. Lucky them. A number of other tabs that we do have. We do have clinical photography. This is used within the trust. They use our in-house developed mobile application, or they can upload these photos here. As you can see, our clinicians have taken some truly gruesome photos <laughs> and decided to put us there. We do have all the previous records as well, so from this patient we can delve in to see previous admissions, appointments, referrals, ED attendances, etc. So we do have all of that information that's actually <coughs> for these patients. And of course, if I did want to go into the meds, I can. Over to you, James. Thank you. So what we've got here is a demonstration of the further interaction between CR and Open EP. For our trust, our clinicians made a decision that if a patient was missing any allergy information at all, um, we would not allow someone to go straight to the drug chart before either entering allergies or entering an override and a reason. Um, 
this is, this is just an example of the bespoke nature of development that's possible with open standards when the two applications can talk to each other. In this instance, um, I'm going to go and add an allergy. Now, just a, a bit of context here. Um, the reason that we've developed this allergies module, because as part of OpenEP, we needed a coded set of adverse reactions we didn't have a coded set. At the moment, it's free text. It's written down in our patient administration system. Um, so this development is providing that, um, that coded set of allergies for us to use as part of the prescribing system. Um, as far as the, the template goes that Ian was talking about, we've chosen a template that's got three archetypes. Um, the allergies archetype, um, and then an exclusion of data, and a no known information. So in this instance, I will choose that this patient's got no known allergies or adverse reactions, and I will save that. And straight away, you see on this up here, our icons change from grey to green, uh, reflecting the change in that data. Um, so I'll just come back to that patient and their summary screen. Um, you can also see patient has no allergies uh, further down in our, in our patient summary. Now in this example for this demonstration, um, this patient it's come to light that they do have an allergy. So if we open up that window, um, I'll choose that the patient now has allergies and I've got four fields to complete. Again, there's many more fields that are part of the adverse reactions <coughs> archetype. Our clinicians wanted to keep things very simple for at least the initial deployment and as part of medications prescribing. So we've got substance, reaction, status and source. <coughs> substance, um, I'll just enter in penicillin. So this is doing search as you type. Um, the actual data that's being <coughs> saved in the background is coded, it's SNOMED data. Reaction, we've chosen just to keep this as free text, but it could be, again, coded if we want. Now, status, at the moment, these are the five status items directly from the archetype. But again, our clinicians are discussing the possibility of trimming this list down according to the needs that we've got within the hospital. And lastly, we've got source. I'll add that allergy, and at this point, I could continue adding further allergies, I could delete it, or I can save it. And as I'm doing so, that data is now being saved against open air, rather than one of our own bespoke databases. And it's now available to any open air based application. You can see in the top, icons change to red, and we've also got some information that says the patient now has one allergy. If I expand that, um, get some more details. If I now go to the medications tab, the drug chart should immediately display. We've no longer got the block because this patient has some allergy information. And what you can also see is OpenEP has read that data from OpenAir and it's now showing known allergies, penicillin class of antibiotic. If I was now to now go and proceed to prescribe through OpenEP, um, the clinical decision support would kick in and warn me about the contraindications. So that's, um, that's our, our demonstration. Like we say, the allergies model, uh, module was something that we've created. So we've done two things here. We've got CR as a clinical portal that we aim to open source. Um, we've embedded Moran's open EP seamlessly, as I think you can all see. Um, and we've created our first module against open air. Um, that was really refreshing because for the first time, we haven't had to define the data model. We've just taken what was on the, on the knowledge portals, the international portals. We've obviously talked to our clinicians about what customization they want, and then we've created the front end. Um, as we said, our ambition is to open source our work. Um, adopting open air and open standards makes our products easier to share and also easier to implement. And in reverse, it also means that we're in a great position to take open air based products, whether they're big solutions like OpenEP, or whether they're smaller modules that have been created by SMEs, integrate them directly into our portal and get that fantastic benefit where, as we're a small team, we can't do everything. So that's the end of our demonstration. Thank you.
Uh, thank you, guys. You know, I, this software engineer, remember, <laughs> this even impresses me. The, 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 the way the guys have, have actually taken two, or sorry, three completely different applications, made them, to they're, they're not even interface. These, these are truly integrated applications. Now, the clinicians are using that as one application. It functions as one application, but as you can see, you know, all of the benefits of being able to, to work w with SMEs to do exactly that, to take that stream of applications that I showed you in my first diagram, is staggering. And when we get into the commercial conversation a bit later on, for those that are interested, this is what we really want to explore now. How do we do more of this? Um, but thank you, guys. I mean, that was absolutely stunning. Quick question? Yeah, one question. Hang on, can we just get the mic? What would happen if, one, if the patient had an allergy already registered with your patient record system? Would that be picked up as well? So that's, um, that's a, a decision that we've got to take. So one of the items of work in our implementation path Fine. Yeah. is about the integration. Do we pull in all of that allergy information into here as well? Bearing in mind that it's not coded. No, so it's no. not very useful. No. And also, once we've, once we've started to make use of this as the master source of allergies, do we start feeding that back through integration yeah. to the, all the other clinical systems? Brilliant answer. That's fine. You know about the problem and you, you, you've, you've got solutions and so on. Thank you. Thank you. Where's Dave? Are you ready? So we've got a couple more quick questions at the back? Yeah. Any mic in a storm? Hi. Um, just a very quick question. A lot of the things that you were showing, like the, um, like the pharmacy application and, uh, and the allergies and, and all of that, you know, very sophisticated algorithms, algorithms sitting behind them, did you do um, some like hot screen analysis of how eye tracks and how clinicians would use the screen? What kind of investment did you put in in, in the actual design of the screens for ease of use? So we, we haven't done anything in terms of scientific analysis of that we've just taken what we know as you know good design but that's a, a really good area that I I think we would all love to see the university helping us with so students participating in their uh, work placement years or gap years and helping us with that type of um, you know that type of UI uh, development and analysis so. we've also um, it 18 might be able to talk about that a little bit later. We've also, we're starting to build relationships as part of this in this ecosystem for UX experts. There are some UX experts in Plymouth and uh, one, of the, one of them is led by a clinical psychologist actually that we know very well and that's exactly the kind of thing we need to use this for because it's a skill we don't have at the moment but it exists and they want to work with us. So it's, it's about pulling that in. Absolutely required, you're quite right.